Yeah, thank you very much, Shannon. Uh, maybe to say a couple of words to contract. Uh, we are not a subsidiary anymore. We are, uh, how can I say, in, in 2000, two companies have been found. It was Aconex in Australia, and it was contract in Munich. And we were like 16 years a kind of really competing to each other, and we were focusing pretty much on Europe and, let's say, a couple of countries out there. Um, while Aconex was already very broad worldwide. And in April 1st, 2016, we got, yeah, after the engagement, we got married, and we are now the global player in this area. So, um, yeah, it's an honor talking to you, so um, in particular as a German, because I've heard so many amazing things about Australia and technology, and, and in my, if I'm on innovation forums, it's clearly the case that that we believe that innovation comes much more from Australia or from Asia, et cetera, and not necessarily from Germany, France, et cetera. So um, why have I started with this project uh, or this slide? Um, the Sydney Opera House is one of our, let's say, most important references in terms of the BIM topic, um, uh, which is uh, very interesting. And when I'm now going to speak about implementation and management, uh, a title which I have inherited, I'd like to really rely a little bit on the, the why. So there might be some references to information you already got. So, so whenever we do something, we do not want to give it, take it as given. So um, because um, it's easy to say if you are on this conference that BIM obviously is reality. But I don't know how you perceive the reality out there. When, we, when I leave this conference and I look what happens in the market and what happens with our clients, we cannot really assume that we are already on the level how we discuss the topic here. Would you agree? So, um, so that's why we'd like to start. The Aconex, Aconex is, is, we are now by far the biggest in terms of supporting construction design and construction projects worldwide. So we are collecting a lot of data. So we are like also like, I think we have 12 to 15 data centers worldwide, and we are already this hub. And I think in the first presentation, it has been stressed by you by that data is going to be, no, it was from the, from the minister when he was saying data is the key and I want to talk about data. So this is already a point. And part of our mission is that we would like to help to transform, yeah? <coughs> that, that at the end of the day, we have just more free time <laughs> for our families and to be smarter. So what are these products? I think Aconex is pretty much known to the topic of document and mail control. But there, what a lot of people don't know is that there is much more on top, like process management, quality and safety. We've heard about fields, application, et cetera. And the topic I'd like to stress today is the, the model management, the validation asset. And that's actually already a common data environment. And that's like the data which we have in common, which we need to share. Um, um, another example in this, which is also famous, is Tesla in California, who are also using us in particular for the BIM topic. So, first of all, why is that important? Um, I think it's quite obvious that BIM is a topic, but when we speak about BIM, we understand behind that really building information management. This is the topic where we see the challenge right now, because we have a lot of silos, we have great applications out there, but it's really owed to the fragmented industry that this should change and that there would be the next level. Number two, also when we go out to the clients, we say there is no better point to start than starting now. Because this is not, again, necessarily given. Although the topic is like 10, 20 years old, we cannot even <coughs> expect it. And I was surprised even when I came first time to Australia, business-wise, talking to clients of ours, and I was expecting like, wow, yeah, everybody is there in BIM and they are doing it. And I've got really, how can I say, grounded? Is that the right word? That a couple of them, of course, are in there, and you gave a great example, fantastic example. But a lot of them, for them, it was like, yeah, yeah, BIM, let's, let's, let's that topic get really developed. So we believe that the CDE, the common data environment, can be really the game changer, one of the game changer in this future. So what did we do? I said we focused on this why. So we didn't want to say, well, we as a vendor, we know everything. <laughs> we, know, we, we have all its clients, etc. We took a different approach. So in 
like a, a year ago, we really went out globally and spoke to really thought leaders. We spoke with Martin Fisher in Stanford. We spoke with Kelvin Kem um, 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 about his experience, with Leon van Berlo from the TNO in Netherlands to really understand the key of the issue. And when I'm saying the key of your issue, why is the industry not already like going? Because it seems to be so obvious. And so we want to understand what is really the role of the authoring tool providers, like the Autodex, the Archicuts, and all of them. Um, what is our role? Is Aconex obsolete, or is Aconex a must? How would we fit into that story? And what we really learned is BIM doesn't, make, doesn't have an end in itself. So that's why I'm saying it's so easy to say on a BIM conference, yeah, yeah, it's BIM, it's Asha. But, but why the hell? <laughs> Isn't it about design and construction? Isn't the best building the building we do not build because we have a special purpose and we evaluate if we build it? Yeah, that's a quote of a Professor Achammer from Austria by really putting the focus in the, in the center. So um, what we learned is obviously there is a time to change. And this change is owed to several reasons. The first reason is really already has been stressed about Moore's law. Yeah? Every 18 months, we have a duplication of the transistors, etc., and technology, which is like now 15, 20 years old in terms of the thinking process, now becomes obvious. We find it in AI applications, in Siri, in Alexa, you name it. Last week, I was at IFA 2017 in Berlin. This is a huge also innovation conference where presenters spoke about smart home and how everything is interconnected, and they are still searching for the business case. <laughs> Yeah, what can it really help? But all of this really impacts. The second point is we're going to be 9.5 billion people in 2050, which is like we grow by 172,000 every day. And all of these people have to live. And the living will be in cities. There is a clear trend in urban development, like 75% supposed to work and live in these huge cities. And what is the requirement for that? The requirement is that everything goes vertical. And if we look at to Hong Kong, and that's also what we have seen in a couple of conferences, there are already more people going up and down instead of going sideways. And if you, look Google, if you use Google Maps, you are misleaded because it doesn't help you because it has to be three-dimensional. It cannot help you anymore. And what is the requirement for these cities? Well, it changes everything. It changes healthcare. It changes transportation by seamless integration. Also, what we heard about mixed reality scenarios when you go to a shopping center. Yeah? So it's not the shopping center as we know anymore. No, we will have it like in a complete um, combined entity. So why talking about this? Because this change has impacts on all of the segments where we are in. This is construction. This is also infrastructure and energy and supply. So we went to these customers and want to understand because again, if I look at this great audience, obviously, this is already common sense. But if we go out and speak to clients, we not necessarily find that. So we spoke, for instance, with Lendlease, and Lendlease clearly confirmed that it's a key topic for them now to establish a manufacturing model in their process, in their core process. And in order to do that, of course, data is key, because without data, you can't do it. Second is the German railway, Deutsche Bahn, a 40 billion euro um, uh, revenue company with 12.1 million people a day. They want to save about 10% in their infrastructure construction costs. And how, I, how do they want to do it? They do it through public participation. You have mentioned that in your presentation that the, the average project is 25 years, and they just want to cut like two, three, four years which makes like 4%, and then 6% of reducing claims. It's a lot of money for them in, in going into that. And that's a conservative number. And last but not least, Bechtel, a company which is one of our clients since two years. Um, they are running an improvement program also to be a data-driven company in the center. So are we talking there about the survival of the fittest? <laughs> it's like the, only the faster will we'll really catch up, the smarter, the more flexible. Um, well, the question is if that is really the principle or if it's more the principle of Darwin about the capability to change. And I think I like this presentation from Scott, 
Was, wasn't it Scott, the second speaker? Scott. Duck. 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 Yeah, when he was talking about and already referring to companies who are new in that <laughs> space and are much faster um, really doing a change, this was already a great example in that. So, um, things we already have heard, the typical situation is not easy, no productivity gain, 10% accepted error rate, and that's not a surprise because we have low IT investments. Just 1% in the vertical investment we've got. Um, that is not, not in particular for Australia, so I also used that in, in Europe. Um, the, the, the threat comes um, not necessarily only from the industry, it's also about coming from outside and the examples we have seen in these other industries to look at that. Why do I speak about it? Because again, I think we are well taught as an industry to look what happens in other industries and how fast these things can change. Because nobody has expected that, that this comes from Uber or Airbnb in that space. So this means a couple of companies already have understood it's time, the rail beings. Um, it's, um, um, data is key and it's time to change. So speaking about some trends. There was this McKinsey study out there 2016 talking about these five different areas and I wanna stress about the <coughs> digitalization and mobility back, and the 5D component. For us, that's like a typical evolution step which happens there. First of all, you have to collect a lot of data and then you have to intercollect coordinate and, and um, relate this data to an object-oriented approach. But this object-oriented approach, again, is not in a silo. It needs to be shared in a collaboration environment. It means, for instance, if we as a group would do a project, we need to share that. So, um, if we look at the trends, and we as a global company, we look, um, forgive me, to UK, because UK made them, is making the most noise right now about BIM progress, et cetera, which not necessarily mean they are the fastest in progressing, but the trend is really clear into that direction. But if we look at this um, BIM report, and again we ask ourselves, the question is what is really meant by it when they speak about BIM? Is it just about the modeling only, or are they already thinking about that in like a kind of 5D or a 6D sense? And for us, this is like what we see when we go out in the market. It's a, a slide which you've probably seen for 10 to 15 years. The reality we meet, and I'm curious about what, what you perceive, is still pretty much here in the drawing world and just about in the geometrical planning. A couple of companies are already here in more the area of the five, four, five, and 60 um, BIM approach. The question for you in a group, would you, how many, uh, do you also observe that the majority is partly in drawings? Hands up. Yeah, that would be like yeah, 10, 20%. So, so it's like already much more in the, in the BIM space. So that's, that's already good. So regarding the process, um, we also checked what is the point where we can deliver the next level. And it's clearly here said and offered by Professor Kivin Yemi that it's about the data management and collaboration piece. So it's not the modeling only. And I'm probably the least to tell this audience something about modeling because of all the presentations I've heard, they are really great and there is already far advanced. But how can we really leverage it? And he's referring to the CDE, the common data environment, the data what we have in common in projects. Um, and when we, when we stress that, um, we usually use this kind of a comparison of a philharmony because we believe uh, a common data environment is where experts meet, where the Revit expert is, the MEP expert meets, etc. Where are the BIM managers as a conductor conducting this whole project, these individuals, to perform really a unique piece, a unique piece for the best sound possible. But if we have that and call that a project, there is also a time before in terms of planning, and there's also a time after. And that leads to the point of the different worlds of BIM. Because depending on markets where we enter, the focus is different. In some markets, it's still in the area of design BIM. 
yeah, authoring, analyzing, simulations, etc. Pretty much in the US, in California, it's nothing what we have to share. While in other markets, we have it strong in the built BIM market, which has happened in Germany like 10 to 15 years already. And then moving into the asset and facilities management area in this regard. This is currently the, the hot topic in UK, where they really want to define the, the, the data they would like to perceive as a client. And I think this is something what I understood so far from the Australian market and will be the next, next question, that clients obviously are not already so deep into the BIM topic. Would you agree? Hands up. OK, that's like, like half of it. Yeah, yeah. And this is crucial, because 12 years ago, when Nick Nisbet, a part of this uh, standardization um, group, they figured out that the main point is here. Because as, as long as clients can't really define what they want to have, it's really hard for us to deliver against it, yeah? So, So, and then last but not least, of course, there is the, the relation between the design BIM to the operational BIM, because, of course, I can have like a more holistic approach about it. I can do my planning in the sense of what is the impact, what is the impact in terms of maintenance cost, et cetera, to be considered. I think this is quite obvious, but it's not reality already. And when I'm saying about this, here in our background from Conject, we have been in facilities management already from 2002 on. Like 15 years, we are doing like a facilities management application. And we know the pain when we come to a customer and we start a project. And not to share a secret, it's like 6 to 12 to 24 months until the facility or asset manager understands the object. And this is just a waste because nobody cared before about the data. OK, and this is, of course, split between CapEx and OpEx in this um, focus. So sharing a couple of misconceptions from our point of view. Number one, it's not about technology. Um, when, when we became busy with the topic of BIM, and for me it was like 10 years ago, I asked myself, all of this is so obvious. <laughs> why, why don't we do it? Why, why not everybody is really picking up and, and entering into the space? And the answer is very easy. It needs more. It needs more. We need to have the BIM manager. And the BIM manager actually is like already like a result of survival of the fittest. Yeah? Because this role has been really established for this new environment, yeah? like in th this conductor. Number two, we need these guidelines and policies where Australia currently works pretty much with PCSG, as far as we are informed, to go for it. And this is also used for a couple of excuses not to do it. Processes and, of course, people. And when we speak about people, then it's later, of course, about education. Second point is the myth of the central model. Um, we ask ourselves when we went out to clients, it was um, um, they wanted always to have a central model, and they want to work simultaneously at, on a model. And we believed, oh no, we, we were like, how can I say, is that really in accordance to the contract? Because in accordance to the contract, they have to deliver a specific work. Um, they are paid for the, delivering that. But if we are there and we do not have permissions and can make sure that this happens, how can this process work? For instance, if an error occurs. And we discussed that with a couple of researchers. And they did studies in Holland where they proved that the central model approach is not necessarily in a sense of a project. They rather propose a, an, a, an approach which is shared here, that the, the different disciplines like the architects or the MEPs are working with their native software, sharing that at a decent time with the BIM manager or the BIM coordinator to create the coordination models, sends that forward as an IFC file to the um, expert teams working then with BCF as the BIM collaboration format, and then feeding that back to the native models, which would be more like the proof of IFC is a downstream format and not like an exchange format in that sense, and also that it's helpful to work with the open format of BCF. And I think that's what you also already have referred to. I was happy to hear that, because I know that in particular in Anglo-American markets, it's pretty much Autodesk dominated, so to speak, but in Europe, we, of course, have to deal with more like Archicad, Alplans, and all of these different 
vendors. So the process is covered here, and this is like these three open formats which we already cover in Aconex, like the Industry Foundation classes, the BCF, and also the COBE for the end of the project. So about education. In education, we find that currently, I've spoken last week with uh, the leader in, in, in Germany, what is really, what are the blockers why we move ahead? So one is in particular in terms of the EIR, and it has been mentioned that the LOD and the LOI, we put that together in the Building Smart Chapter Germany as LOX development, is not really specified clearly by the, um, by the clients. And also that the, the asset information request is not really specified. And so it comes again to the point, if I don't specify my end result, it's difficult. And we are, it seems that we are still in the process there. The second is that the education in university not necessarily helps us to have the, the right people um, to, to move into that paradigm. And I think you have mentioned to this that we have like this catch-22. No incentive, it goes back again, and then there is no really progress happening. So, next point is about change. Um, um, there is this rumor, um, if a change happens in construction industry, forgive me, <laughs> in 25 years, everybody fears about his job. Um, if you're in Apple and there is no change in three to six months, everybody fears about his job. Yeah? So it's like, like from a mentality point, there is also a reason why we are there where we are. Um, um, there's a good example. We did like a board meeting in 2005, and that was like the first announcement of this. And I think nobody has, could as anticipate what really happened by having a supercomputer and what that is dominating our lives, and that a lot of people walk out there like zombies all the time checking anything um, in this regard. And this extrapolation is something what we probably underestimate. Maturity. Um, we also want to understand what is happening in the markets. So we looked at the typical matrix you are familiar with, with the native formats and the open formats, with the being in my office, in my community, or being in a complete project. So here we are having like the typical authoring tools, we are having the product families with the closed, forgive me, closed BIM approach, and of course the connected BIM or open approach on the right side. And we wanted to understand: is there a pattern or is it a coincidence? Yeah, can it be the case that yeah, like in in, in UK, it's typically it has to be here, or and in Finland they are somewhere else. What we learned is it seems to be that this is like a typical evolution. Yeah, and we also compared it a little bit with the development of a human being yeah, by saying, of course, I got interested by it. And when, again, when we speak about modeling, it's, we don't have to speak so much about it. It's so common ground for 10 to 20 years. But if it's about collaboration and learning the limits, if I'm only in one product family, then we enter into this. And the markets confirmed that in that way. So we clearly um, figured out that Finland and Norway by far is the most developed market in terms of BIM. Just last week I spoke with, uh, with the Finnish again to double check that. It's like every project is produced in BIM, open BIM, IFC based. 50% coming as demand from the client, from the public client. And Finland is probably the interesting, most interesting market because they are having like 87% coming from the, just from the industry, so they do it because they look at the business case. So that's a very healthy approach. What I'm curious to talk about with you is, is the result, what we got at this point from Australia and New Zealand, if you would still uh, agree that this is there or if the progress already is much further in this regard. Last but not least, Finland currently observes a real problem because Although they have IFC established, they haven't changed their business model. They think still in the old contracts, so they haven't updated really their processes to work closely together. And this Sutter Health um, um, client from the US is a very good example because they go really to an, an IPD approach. Um, they work with open books, they pay the cost, and they share the benefits. I think this is a, a big step for us in the industry to move into that. But I know it from a couple of interviews here in Australia that when, when they got the models from design, 
it's the way like I think also you have spoken in your project. They just take them after design, throw them away, and do a remodeling of it. And this is like, it's a sin, yeah? It's a sin of an and, 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 and anti-manufacturing model which currently happens there. So what does that mean for a common data environment? The common data environment, as, as we look at that, is like, that's like the situation. We have this barrier, like 90% don't have really access to this data, and 10% uh, are in this expertise. And our idea is to have that common data environment as the solution available for everybody. The interesting in this, what I'd like to point out, that this is not like echoing to each other. No, people can work with their native models in their sub-communities, which is according to the contract. But when they share the data, that they work with interoper interoperability, open, uh, capable formats. So um, why is it important? Because for the, for the handover, it would be good to really get IFC files, because we firmly believe, and I don't know how you experience that in the market, uh, an object is not built for two to three years or five years. It's built for 20 years, 30 years, or in Sydney Opera House for hundreds of years. We need to be sure that the format still works in a couple of years. And if it's a native format, there is a risk. So when we look at the CDE, there are different levels of a CDE. One, the easiest one, what we learned from PASS 1192, is it's just a place to store data yeah, and collaborate. But if we look at like more progressed versions of a CDE, it's also about processes, automation, and also about integration. So when you have spoken about it, I, I was thinking, like, yeah, it's exactly, it's exactly the, pro, the, the, the point of integrating this together um, to an approach. And um, I think also in one of the presentations before it was said, 16 applications in the average are used in a BIM project. There is a tendency or there is a desire that we reduce it, that we get like smaller amount because all of them has to be administered, it has to be managed, etc. So the CDE with more capability is probably the key. In terms of return of investment, um, we already heard a, a couple of them. Um, in this regard, I want to focus in particular to processes. Because in processes, there we foresee the big leverage. Here, for example, is an RFI process. And when we speak or spoke with MACE, MACE Management from UK, which is a two billion pounds private owned company, they really figured out in their analysis that they could save like six to seven times less RFIs in a project compared to conventional project. If I speak to other BIM managers, some of them, they report from Qatar that they could even reduce it to zero because everything is so obvious um, and no mistake happens. Um, another example, because this is like what is the potential to be saved, is from Vinci when they speak about this issue or coordination cycle, that it's not only about issue and clash detection, no, it's really managing this process. And managing this process is that you really figure out they have been identified, they have been assigned, they have been sorted out, and you go to the next iterative cycle. And this is a kind of like, uh, coming from software industry, you go in agile development. So when we reduce that from two to one week, it doesn't mean we double the speed, but it will be for sure an improvement. It's an incremental approach which helps in this regard. So how do we look that, at that? The CDE is the fundament with open APIs, and it needs like a dashboard and reporting engine, like a monitoring in order to immediately understand how my behavior impacts the project. And then it comes with different applications. I have made it a little bit more easy because I didn't know how detailed I can be today, so that's why you only see the blocks. So in this coordination piece, this is exactly the point of really sharing the data, coordinating the data, measurements, and all of this stuff but also in AR and VR. So we are also looking into that, but not like we see it on fares only. We already try to figure out, is that a point for the design coordination process? Can we leverage that and can create really an improvement in this regard? Then it's about validation, because data without validation doesn't make sense. Bring it to the field and feed it back into the progress of the project. 
handover and asset management, and plan and control as the overall BIM house. But this is not it, because as a fragmented industry, this also has to echo with the applications which are out there. So this means the CDE with open APIs who can really interface with the typical applications is probably key, like to interface with Dropbox, with P6, and other applications to make life easy for you and your clients. So how do we do that? Um, we focus on a lot of use cases, so we do not want to focus on features. I will not show you so many features. Um, I want to pick up just a couple of them, like number one about 3D model and visualization. So that's like the first really use case because if we can share that through the supply chain, it's obvious what's happening. And this reduces a lot, and it's about having a powerful viewing capability for everybody without installation, just available. Um, this also has to come, of course, on a tablet. It should not be only shared online. Number two, it's about the um, workflow control clash detection. And in this area, it's about really integrating with the typical um, tools like Revit, um, Tecla BIM site, Navisworks, Bentley, etc., to make the life easier of our clients that they can directly interface with the applications. And there is like a, um, a video showing that. We get some tone. Delivering BIM helps save time and money on a project. But when managing design coordination with inefficient PDFs or spreadsheets, these savings can be lost. 3D model authors have to manually locate design issues using only descriptions or screenshots. The process is slow, confusing, so and error prone. Just a couple but of words about this. Is this is what you said. We will not go through the whole movie, but this is showing like in an open approach. We created that together with Building Smart International to share that this is possible in an open format and it can be shown um, through uh, our website. Um, going to the next one, last but not least. Um, construction management, and there we pick out just one um, point. This is related to measurements, that it is crucial to be able really to fast measure in between beams or in between lines before you order equipment, etc. And this, of course, also then for um, an offline device when you are going to construction site. So, interestingly, regarding data, the digital twin. Um, if we look at the digital twin, we look at it a little bit different. Not only in a way like the, the built virtually first, we look at it from a communication point of view. And this example here um, shows very interesting how this could look like. So that's like the object or project. And what we did is we investigated the communication relationships in between these 2,000 participants the 1.8 million documents, the 4.7 million correspondence which has been handled. And this gives us a complete new way and opportunity to think about what happens in a project. We collect this data and we can learn where are problems into it, up to really going into semantic analysis if this is necessary. So um, interesting also is like in observations of projects who have adapted to it, what did they learn and how did they improve over time? Just by applying it, we could really show or they explained to us that this helps us to achieve um, improvements in adoption, collaboration and standardization. So this leads to predictive analysis. So, and when we speak about predictive analysis, why not having an AI instance in front of you, you showed that very impressively, I liked it a lot, with the avatars or whatever. If a client wants to upload a model or a file or whatever, that an instance speaks to you and helps you by, by doing it or avoiding an error in this regard. And we collect this data in order to do like base time matrix, benchmark against industry averages or in, in the portfolio of a client. Yeah. Our hospital projects, why is it different in this regard? Why is the RFI cycle in these projects like 2.1 days and there it's 3.5 days? What's the issue? How to go there? 
And this is something where a common data environment, which is powerful, can really make the difference and is a complete different story than just storing data in the cloud somewhere. So, conclusion, it's time for lunch. <laughs> Building information management, from our perspective, is inevitable. The sooner we get started, the better it is. And we should go out, and that's what we do also in the market, to bring also the not convinced people already behind us. Um, we really say the time is to start now. In my country, <laughs> to my pain, I meet a lot of clients, and they say, ah, oh, let's wait. Uh, can you prove it? Does it make sense? Well, look around. Of course, it's so obvious, because all people who have started, they will never go back. And yeah, the CDE is the game changer. I hope I could give you some ideas about that. And thank you very much for your attention.